Hey guys, welcome to another edition of MapReach Studio. Today, I'm gonna to show you a free looks plugin from a company called Boris FX that includes mocha tracking. If you don't know what that is, I'm gonna explain it, but I'm also gonna show you how to use it to create a cool masking effect. Let's dive in. Before we get started, let's take a look at the finished effect. This clip is stock footage that I purchased from Storyblocks. There's a link below if you want to download a comp and follow along. So here's the unaffected clip, and let's go ahead and build this using the free version of Boris Continuum Complete Looks that you can download using the link below. I'm going to press Command-5 to open the effects browser, and I'm going to select BCC Film Style. And here is the effect, BCC Looks. This is the free version. All of these other ones are from the complete Boris Continuum collection, but this is the free one we're going to use. I'm gonna drop that on the clip and close the effects browser. In the inspector, I have some buttons. I'm gonna click Effects Editor, which will bring up a separate effects editor window where I can see all of my built-in presets. Now there's quite a few of them in here and you can think of these as, I guess, LUTs, but they're actually more than that. You have a lot of control. Let's take a look at this eight millimeter color. It's got a nice vintage look as if it was shot on Super 8 with Kodachrome film stock. Here's one called Basic Warm Diffusion. I'm just gonna preview a few of these for you. And uh, here's one called Beach Cool. And by the way, any of these can be customized. For example, with this Bleach Cool selected, I'll use the control panel over here in the lower right. And let's say I want to change the gamma. I just place my cursor inside the value field and drag left or right. Maybe I want to add more red to the image. So I'll drag in the red hot scrubber. Maybe I want to add some blur or move some blur. There's a number of things that you can do to really customize this. I'm going to increase the opacity of this default color to add a gradient. So you can see I have full customization over these presets. If you want to save a preset, just click this little icon right here. Give your preset a name. I'm going to call this gradient cool and uh, click OK. And if I go up to the pop-up menu up here, all of my custom presets will be stored in this panel here, and I can quickly access them right here. But I'm not gonna use one of my custom presets. I have something else in mind, so I'm gonna go back to All. And at the top, I want to apply the eight millimeter black and white effect. And out of the box, I like it quite a bit, so I'm not gonna make any alterations to it. I'm just gonna go ahead and click Apply. And now my effect is applied to my stock footage. The next thing we want to do is we want to apply a mask to the subject right here in this helmet area. To do that, I'm going to go over to the inspector. I'm going to click on this button that says Mocha Mask. Boris FX uses the award-winning Mocha tracking engine, and it's used all the time on feature films. It's it's been the industry standard for planner tracking for many years. I'll talk more about what planner tracking is in a moment, but I just wanted to show you that it's built into this free version of Boris CC Looks. Dragging the playhead, I'm looking for a good frame to begin drawing my mask. I think I'm gonna start it after she's raised her visor all the way to the top of her helmet, and then I might wanna track from here. Then I'll figure out what to do with this portion of the clip. So we'll work on this portion of the clip first. Then I'm gonna go up and get this Bezier pen tool from the toolbar, and I'm just gonna start clicking to make some points. Let's click here, and I'm just gonna make a shape that outlines the opening of this helmet here. Click on the first point to close the mask. You can drag on these points to reposition them as you want. 
If you drag on the blue handles, you can make them curvier or more linear. I like the shape down at the bottom to be a little bit more linear because of the hard edge nature of this um, mask aperture here. And now that I have my mask shape, I can track forward clicking the track forward button. Now I'm running this on an Intel Mac right now, not a M1, so I can't tell you what the speed differences are, but it's still pretty good even on this slower 2015 iMac. All right, so our track is finished. We can scrub through it and play. And this is what's known as a planner tracker as opposed to Final Cut's object tracker. And basically what that means is, let me go ahead and turn on this little grid. The track is being mapped to the surface of the object. So as she turns her head, the perspective changes. Notice the mask changes perspective. It's on a co-plane with the subject, or in this case, her face. So that's why it's often called a co-planner tracker. And this is a lot different than, again, the object tracker in Final Cut, where you're just tracking an object. I'll go ahead and turn that off. And the next step is to make any adjustments to the mask or the track that I want. So as I scrub through this, maybe I want to give a little bit more space right here to her cheek. So I'm going to just grab that control point, just move it a little bit. Notice as I do that, a keyframe is added right at the playhead. So now the mask interpolates from its one position to its new position. And you can select multiple points. So for example, these two points over here, I can hold down the shift key and drag over them and they become selected. I wanna make sure I deselect this point here. Now I can move this a little bit tighter in towards her face. And again, I get a keyframe and so the mass now is interpolating from that new position. You can see it changing now. Maybe I might want to move these in a little bit more. Now, I have an unnecessary keyframe. I get this weird move here. So you could park your playhead on a keyframe and then click the minus key, this minus key, and that will remove a keyframe. And that will make the mask a little smoother there. All right, so let's take a look at the mask in Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna press Command S to save, then close the window. So right away, we see the effect. Her face is black and white and all grainy, but we really want the opposite effect. We want all the grain to be outside the mask. So in the inspector, I'm going to locate this area called pixel chooser slash mocha, open that up, and click on the mask disclosure triangle and click invert mask. And there we have it. Now, if you need to see your mask, you just want to see the mask shape, you can click on this checkbox and you can see there is the, the mask that was tracked, the planar mask. And maybe we want to give a little bit of feathering to soften the edges. So we'll go ahead and drag the mask feather a little bit this way. And I'll turn off the mat. It just works really nicely. Now, the challenging part is this area where her visor is down and then she raises the visor. So we have a couple of things that we need to work on. One is her head is in a new position and also Again, the visor is obscuring her face. So we have a couple of things to work on here. And thankfully, this is pretty easy to address with keyframes in Mocha. So I'm gonna go back to the Mocha Mask Editor by clicking the button. And what I'm looking for is a frame where the visor is completely closed. This looks like a good frame right here. To select the mask, I'm gonna click on the red mask outline. And you can see it's out of position. 
So what I really need to do is move it over and I'm gonna put my mouse on the edge of the white bounding box and I'm just gonna drag it over there so it's aligned. Notice a keyframe is added. So now the mask position is interpolated from this new position to the starting point of where we began tracking. So again, the interpolation is really smooth and all I had to do is move that mask. So the next thing we need to deal with is the fact that she's lifting the visor. So what I'm gonna do is move the playhead to that keyframe and then I'm gonna start moving these control points by dragging them on top of each other. So I'm gonna take that control point, move that there, grab this one and move it here. By the way, you can change the curvature by just dragging right there. Maybe I want that a little bit more of a linear curve. Drag that here, drag this one here. Okay, so we have the starting point of our mask. Now I could use these little buttons here to go frame forward, frame reverse, but it's just easier to use a keyboard shortcut, which is command right arrow. So command right arrow advances the video one frame at a time. So I'm gonna kind of go right there when we see her lips peering through the mask visor here. So what I'm gonna do is start adjusting these control points. At this stage, I'm not super concerned about being precise. I just wanna get the general effect to work and then I can go back and fine tune uh, the mask. So I'm just gonna tap command and right arrow and now I'm gonna, let's see, move this up here. Drag these in line with the visor shape. Command right arrow. Just uh, advancing frame by frame and then moving the control points. Eventually, I'm going to get to the frame where I started my initial track when the visor was all the way open. Now I can see here I'm starting to cut into her cheek, so I'm gonna bring that out a little bit. There's where my initial track started, but notice that Mocha is gonna interpolate between my last mask keyframe there and the starting of my track. So this will probably work well let's look at it in final cut so i'm going to save that press command s close the window i'm scrubbing through here grabs the mask visor lifts it up and reveals her face that's actually a pretty decent rotoscope in fact that's what i was doing i was changing the mask shape and it's really like rotoscoping so I was able to track it very nicely from here and then rotoscope the portion where she's lifting her visor. So it works out really great. Now let's, um, let's do one other thing that's not included in the free version, but I just wanna show you what else you can do with Mocha. So I'm gonna apply a film grunge effect to this clip. Now before I do that, I'm gonna jump back into the Mocha mask editor and I wanna save this track. I don't wanna to have to redo this for the next effect. I wanna be able to apply all of this mask data with its planner tracking information to the next effect. To do that, I'm gonna to go to the File menu and choose Export Project. I'm gonna call this Space Girl Vintage. And I'm gonna just save that on the desktop. Then close the window. All right, so let's add another effect. I'm gonna press Command-5 to open the Effects Browser. And this time I'm gonna use this BCC Film Grunge. And I really like this effect. I think it's pretty unique. I'm gonna drag it onto the clip. And there's a lot of things I can do with it. For one, uh, if I scroll down here, by the way, um, man, there are just a ton of parameters that you can adjust for all these effects. It's, it's, it's crazy. In fact, sometimes I'm, I'm wondering, say, what, where's my effect? You gotta kind of scroll down. I hear, here it is, my film grunge effect. 
And here are all the parameters. So for example, I can increase the amount of dirt by dragging the slider. I can increase the amount of hair. I want a really hairy looking clip. Um, some additional scratches, maybe some more stains, some splotches. I mean, I can really make this film look like garbage. Um, isn't that funny? We start with pristine 4K video and then we use a filter like this to make it look like crap. Anyway, um, I need a vignette. So I'll drag the opacity slider. Let's just give it a nice, like an old school vignette. And let's take a look at that. It's just a pretty cool filter. Now, what I don't want is the film effect, all this grunge going across her face. I want to use that mass data that we used on the eight millimeter preset. I want to use the mass that we saved and apply it to this filter. So to do that, I'm going to go over to the inspector and I'm going to locate Mocha Mask for the film grunge effect. Open that up and here is my composite effect. And what I want to do is go to the file menu and choose open project. Then locate that preset I saved, Space Girl, Vintage, open. And now that mass data has been applied to this grunge effect. I'm gonna go ahead and close this and you'll see what I mean. Oops, I'm gonna save this. It works, but you see here, it's inside the mask and I want it outside, so I have to reverse it. So I have to invert the mask. So again, I'll go over to Film Grunge, open up Pixel Chooser, open up Mask, and click Invert. Now you'll see all the scratches, dirt, splotches, and grunge happens outside the mask, and it's not affecting her face at all. So with that, I've successfully masked and tracked this mask wearing subject. So what do you think? Have you used Boris Effects plugins before? Let me know your thoughts and thanks for watching.